ESPN Sports. This is Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Hello everyone and welcome to Grizzly Insider here on the Montana Television Network. I'm your host, Kyle Hansen. Another chapter in the rich and storied history of the Brawl of the Wild is in the books. And it was a Bobcat sweep as Montana State swept Montana in Bozeman on Saturday. The Bobcats won all four regular season matchups in basketball with the Grizz this season, making it the first time since 1999 that that's happened. We have Grizz head coaches Brian Holsinger and Travis DeCure in studio again this week, and we're also joined by Lady Grizz guard Gina Markson to talk about her first season at Montana. That's all coming up, but first, let's recap the rivalry games from over the weekend. The women's game began the day's rivalry matches. MSU utilized their post players early as Cola Bad Bear and Lexi Deedon both went to work down low as the Bobcats grabbed the early advantage. UM went blow for blow with MSU in the first half as Libby Stump and Carmen G. Feller led the way offensively for Montana, but the Bobcats went into halftime up 35-33. to In the third quarter, the game again went back and forth until MSU found momentum late in the quarter, which livened the crowd and sent the Bobcats into the fourth quarter up 50-40 to after a three-pointer by Bad Bear. MSU led by as much as 14 points in the fourth quarter, However, the Lady Grizz mounted a furious late rally to get the game close. But it was too little, too late, as Bad Bear finished with 23 points, Darian White had 19, and Deedon finished with 17 for the Bobcats, as the Bobcats won 75-73. to The men's game was next, and it was a game that was marred by stoppages, as the matchup totaled 46 total fouls between the two teams, as neither program could get into a rhythm. Eventually, the Bobcats went into halftime up 32-24 to after a three-pointer by Tyler Patterson, and they would balloon their lead up to as much as 15 points in the second half. But like the women's game, the comeback was on for Montana, thanks in large part to Josh Bannon getting hot as he finished with 25 points to lead everyone. But down the stretch, the Bobcats held on as Raekwon Battle led MSU with 19 points, and Montana State completed the season sweep of the Grizzlies with a 72-68 win. Coming up, Brian Holsinger joins us in studio to talk about the Brawl of the Wild. That's next on Grizzly Insider. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. We're back on Grizzly Insider, and we'll start things off with Lady Grizz head coach Brian Holsinger. And Brian, now that you've had a couple of days to digest the loss of the Brawl of the Wild, just what kind of stands out to you, and what do you guys need to rectify going forward? Yeah, I mean, disappointing. I mean, we, we, wanna, we wanna go, wanted to go over there and, and beat them, um, but you just got to play. You, you got to play better, and some of that has to do with them. Um, some of that has to do with us, <laughs> and of course. And, and uh, yeah, we, we, we just we didn't get a good start. Um, and... Uh, they're out crept in for some reason in the third quarter. Some weird doubt that we didn't take the shots we should have taken. The turn to turnovers, and and they get the lead, and then we make a furious comeback. Of course, but but uh, too little, too late on that. As you look at that first uh, quarter, team battled really the whole first half. But the first quarter, obviously, they're pounding the paint with Cola and Lexi, mm -hmm. and kind of setting the tone down uh, down low early. But that first half, you guys were kind of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. The shooting seemed to be there a little bit. Like, what was it about this first half compared to the last one where your team seemed to kind of go blow for blow as opposed to, you know, get dig into a hole and then have to fight their way back? Yeah, I mean, I think more than anything is, just, you know, points in the paint matter. And um, credit to Cola and, and, and Lexi, too. Um, they both just they kind of took it to us in the first half and, and really the entire game. They, it was the difference in the game. Uh, you know, you, you, you trade paint points for threes. You know, sometimes that works out, but a lot of times when you're shooting closer to the basket, you make a better, better percentage than you do away from the basket. And so it's not rocket science. It's like we have to, we have to score better inside and we have to stop them better inside. And really that was the game in my opinion. Um, there's a few hustle plays here and there that, that just we, we didn't seem to grab that are real crucial plays, and, and those things matter in games like that. When you look at the second half and as uh, Montana State pulls away a little bit, then you guys do have to have that furious rally. What was maybe the biggest difference in that where they were able to build a lead? Yeah, the same kind of stuff. I mean, we, it's, you know, it's a five-point game. It's 45-40 with, with uh, I don't know, a minute 20, a minute 20 left in the, in the, in the third quarter. Uh, so it's a five-point game. If we come down and get a score and a stop, it's completely different. Instead, we just offensively didn't execute, had a couple turnovers that were crucial, and, and they made a couple big plays. So then it goes from five-point game to a ten-point game going into the fourth quarter. And really just from there, we had to fight our way back. 
that rally at the end, it was a lot of, you know, there's franticness to it, but shots are starting to fall and you guys were getting some stops and able to kind of close that gap a little bit. Like, why, why was that? Was it just maybe that sense of urgency? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, a big reason is Libby Stump, right? I mean, she's, she, you know, I, 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 at one point in the fourth quarter, I go, you got it. Like, you take the ball, Mac run the wing, um, let her bring it up as the point, and then she became, we, just, we were setting a flat screen and letting her go to work, and, and then they started trapping her, and I was really proud of how she found, she found Carmen, and then we, found, we just found some wide open threes, and of course they go in, but a lot of the mentality of shooting is just, um, is, it's a confidence thing, right? It's a, it's, oh, we feel good, so they're going to start to go in. We didn't do that most of the game until the very end where Libby kind of takes on herself to help everybody else feel good. And then shots start to go and, and you know, we made it a game and obviously had a chance. Um, with about 20 seconds left, Libby had a layup to put it to one and didn't quite, didn't make it. And that's, that's you know, you don't want to put yourself in those positions, especially on the road. The, one of the biggest storylines from your program in these two games is just the fearlessness of Mac and Libby and the freshmen really stepping up in big uh, rivalry games, the first experience. This. I mean, wh why do you think they've been so prepared and ready to go in these games? I don't think it matters as much. I mean, it's not that it doesn't matter. I don't think they get into the weird mental things. If things go wrong, are you to start to hang your head, you start to think about two things too much. They just play. And that's how you have to do this. You know, you have to play the game pretty free mentally to just go and play. A lot of the other, a lot of the other girls on our team, for some reason, just uh, continue to take you know negative plays and turn them into a few other negative plays. And so we gotta, we gotta get better at that. Credit to Libby and you know freshmen come in and they're like, we're gonna play. Uh, and so that's how everybody, if everybody, if we can get everybody to play like that, we'll be pretty tough to beat. It's been a, still a pretty good second half of uh, Big Sky play for uh, the Lady Grizz, and you have three more regular season games coming up, three games in five days with Portland, Sac, and Idaho. So biggest thing coming up in these upcoming games for you guys as you look to finish strong heading into Boise uh, next weekend. Yeah, we got to get back on track. Um, you know, there's a few plays in here. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it feels like it more since it is a rivalry game, of course. Uh, but <clears throat> we have to get back on track and continue to play good basketball. We've played really good on the road. Um, and so I look forward to our kids responding really good starting today, obviously, and in practice and, and moving on toward this weekend. Uh, two tough, tough games. Obviously, Portland State is much improved, and Sac State is, one of the, is up there with us. And so, you know, we, we got a lot to play for still. We got we to gotta get a good, good seating, get some momentum going into the conference tournament, and then anything can happen. As always, Brian, thanks so much for your time. Lady Grizz on the road this week at Portland State, at Sac State, before coming back to Missoula to play Idaho next Monday. And don't go anywhere. Gina Markson will be joining us in studio coming up. Get social with Grizzly fans and follow MTN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, and we are joined by Lady Grizz guard Gina Markson. Gina, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You, so you guys are coming off the big weekend meeting the Bobcats for the second time this season. Can you just kind of walk me through what these uh, le next few days have been like since uh, after the loss and just kind of rebound with the uh, end of the season coming up? Yeah, I mean, after the loss, it was definitely frustrating. Um, we looked back at some of the tape, and we saw a lot of it was just mistakes that we made on our end and things that we can clean up. Um, so I think moving forward, we just got to improve on those things as well, especially with the next last, the last three games coming up with the season. When you got here, you knew of the rivalry from your time here in the Big Sky Conference, but now that you've got a chance to play in this rivalry twice, both at home and on the road, just what were, what were your experiences like and what was it like feeling that atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, I can definitely say I've never experienced anything like it before. I've had rivalry games, but nothing like this. Obviously, the fans are really into it, which is really fun for us and exciting. And it's really cool to see both communities just be really part of women's basketball. And, you know, you don't get that in a lot of communities and a lot of schools. It's, it's a tough uh, loss, no matter like what time of the year it is. But with it being so close to the end of the season, how does the team maybe look at this to maybe propel you? Because it's been a good second half of conference play, but you want to use that to kind of round out these next few games. How do you guys maybe use that to kind of push you forward here going? forward yeah I think I mean we just use it as motivation um, a lot of it are just these little things and little plays and hustle plays that we need to capitalize on and a lot of it is just based on our focus our mentality and I think yeah moving forward we're just gonna focus on fixing up those things especially heading into the tournament kind of a fascinating career arc for you because this is your first year uh, with the Lady Grizz program so I guess you know I just ask you uh, what's the season been like for you as you've gotten a chance to you know you took the year off from basketball and came here so just your time here at Montana how would you describe what this first season's been like 
I've loved it. It's de definitely been a roller coaster coming back off of taking a year off, but you know, the community, my coaches, my teammates, you know, they've been so supportive of me. And for me, like I've had some ups and downs just getting kind of back into the groove of things. But yeah, with their support, I mean, I love it. It's awesome. You had such a, you know, talented career at the University of Idaho and then opted to, you know, some take some time off. What made you ultimately want to do that and step away from the game? I imagine you've been playing since you were a kid. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of factors that went into it. I think toward, I had thought about it for a little bit, and towards the end when I finally made the decision, it just kind of, I had that feeling like, you know, it was time to just step away, and um, I kind of had lost the love and the passion I had for it. And, you know, a big thing for me is having fun when I'm playing, and I wasn't feeling that anymore, so I decided to step away. When you got a chance to come back, I mean, what was that process like? Were you kind of feeling the fire again? And, you know, were you kind of in contact with coaches? What was maybe that process like to get you back on the court? And what made you want to come back and play basketball? Um, honestly, like, I wasn't really in contact with anybody. I just kind of lived my life as a regular student. And I didn't touch a basketball the entire year. I didn't really think about basketball. I mean, I watched my friends play, of course. But um, I, knew, I didn't have any feeling that I was going to come back. And I don't know, something towards the end of the year, I guess the curiosity started to tr like trickle back in and a couple of my friends who still played were asking if I was ever going to come back and I was you know I don't know maybe probably not and you know a lot of my friends just said you know if there's any ounce of you that's curious about wanting to play again put your name in the portal see what happens and if you decide you don't want to play anymore then that's fine you can take it out but I mean if you finally get that urge again then you have the opportunity. You know uh, what, what about Montana stood out as the place you wanted to re-pick up your basketball career? Um, I think a big part of it was um, Coach Brian. I had one of my best friends. He used to coach her at Oregon State, and she always just had amazing things to say about him. And I mean, he somehow knows everybody that I know, and every single person that I talked to, it was just consistent, you know, just saying how great of a person he is and how much he cares about basketball, and more importantly, how much he cares about his players as people. And that was something I was really looking forward to if I was going to come back to it. Obviously, I have old teammates on the team as well, and Keely and Haley, and I've known Sammy for 10 plus years. So it just felt kind of comforting and just kind of felt like just the right fit, especially when I took my visit and just got to see the campus, meet everybody, it just felt right. When you started playing basketball again, did it feel right to kind of get back into it? Like, what was that like? You know, I imagine the acclimation process, like you mentioned, was probably difficult at times, but you know, once you started playing again, did it feel like this the right decision to come back and play basketball in your college basketball career? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely had some humps in the road, but um, I mean, I the basketball part kind of came back to me pretty quickly, which was nice. I think it was definitely the mental side of the game and just kind of making reads and making decisions that took a little bit longer for me. Um, but, you know, once I, once I got here, especially in the summer and started working out with the team, it was just like every day that we practiced and every day I was with everybody, it was just like solidifying my decision. And so now you just kind of go forward here to wrap up your first regular season with the Lady Grizz. What's the biggest thing that the team's trying to hone in on with two weeks until Boise? It's, you know, tough to believe that the conference tournament's almost here. Yeah, it's, it's flown by really fast. I, I always say every year that you play, it goes by faster and faster. And I think just with the rest of the time that we have, we're still trying to reach that potential that we can reach as a team and just cleaning up all these little things that we've been working on all year. And I'm excited to see what the next couple of weeks hold for us. Definitely. Well, Gina, thanks so much for your time. Glad you're enjoying your, your first year back in, uh, in college basketball. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with head men's basketball coach Travis DeKeer coming up. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. We're back on Grizzly Insider, and we are joined by Grizz men's basketball coach Travis DeKeer. Travis, coming off the, the loss to the Bobcats, you had a couple days to kind of digest it. Can you just kind of walk me through how the ensuing days have been after that loss? Ugly basketball game. Uh, just way too many turnovers um, in the first half and, and not great execution on either side of the ball, which, which kind of got us off to a slow start in both halves, really. Um, but Montana State, they showed up. They had good scout. They, were, they, they wanted that game. They played hard. Um, I would have liked to have been a little more entertaining for the six, 7,000 people that were there. But uh, either way, my hat's off to the Cats. You know, in, in a game like this, I mean, really the story is, you know, a rivalry game, but there was a lot of fouls. I believe it was 46, 47 fouls in the game total between both teams. When it starts off like that, like, as a coach, what's the adjustments like? You know, how do you kind of weather that storm early? Your depth is challenged early. We were forced to play every post player eligible in the first half and then play small um, just because the, the fouls racked up. We just had so many guys with two fouls. We, we played the last 10 minutes with Moody and Bannon, both with two fouls. 
uh, which typically I wouldn't play guys. So we, we were a little soft for a number of reasons. One, the fouls racking up, but, but also we just kind of started that way and it took us a while to snap out of it and find ways to play physical, uh, but smart at the same time. And, and once we did that, the game changed uh, in our favor and uh, we just we ran out of time. When, when the flow is affected, like how, how much did that maybe affect your team as well when there's a lot of stoppages and, you know, both teams can't really get any shots off, you know, things right. like that? Well, there's no fast breaks. And when there's no fast breaks, there's, there's no flow. And, and, you know, I think the game gets a little boring for everyone at that point when you're just you're walking up and down the floor for 40 minutes. And so it was difficult for us to kind of get emotionally attached to that lack of flow. Um, but, but at the same time, you control that too. Um, there's some fouls we could have minimized. Um, there's some possessions we could have gotten a rebound, a loose ball, and got into transition. When we did, we had a lot of success. We just didn't have very many of those opportunities. When you came into the second half, I guess, what was the adjustments in that element? Because it seemed like the start of the second half, the fouls dialed back a little bit on both sides, and you get the, the flow picked up a little bit. And you know, what were maybe adjustments from your guys? Uh, the biggest one offensively for us was we just we put the ball in Bannon's hands and spread the floor out, and and just really played ball screen offense uh, for 20 minutes and and kind of attacked. Uh, some guys that may not be their, their best defenders. Um, and we were able to kind of open up some areas, either get attack in the rim, and that's kind of where Moody was able to get some shots and Vasquez as well. So uh, we, we found some things offensively we typically do in the second half, but I'm not sure our defense got much better. In the second half as well, they open up that uh, double-digit lead the Bobcats do, but you guys are able to fight back, and a lot of that was Josh Bannon kind of coming alive and seemingly not able to miss. I mean, well, just what can you say about your team coming back a little bit and having some fight? Yeah, we, we, we definitely showed some fight about the halfway through the second half. We, we played well defensively. Uh, we got stops. Once again, we got in transition. I thought we actually started decent in the first half. Or in the second half, those first couple minutes, we got shots. It just didn't go in. Uh, we had some bunnies not go in, and then they scored in transition. So that affected us negatively and put us in a hole we really didn't want to be in. And uh, down 15 is, is tough to come back with, within about a 12-minute stretch, which we were able to do. Just fell a little short. You always want this game with it being the rivalry game, but how much can a loss like this maybe feel you guys with three regular season games left in conference tournament a week away here? We know we can play better. Um, we, we know on both sides of the ball we, we can execute a lot better. Um, we, we can be more aggressive. There's areas to attack um, that, that maybe we exploited late um, that we could have maybe found earlier. Um, so we, we know, you know, in all these games that we haven't necessarily performed up to our level, we know we can play better. Um, we just got to find ways to get off to better starts. You guys, uh, three games left, Portland State, Sac State at home, and then Idaho on the road, three games in five days. Um, you've seen them all. You beat two of them earlier this year. Just, you know, the biggest part of this or biggest thing to this stretch, what is that for you guys? At this point, every game is, is for standings. Um, where, where do you want to be going into the conference tournament? You want to be as high in the standings as possible. You want to make sure you're not playing on Saturday. Um, so we need to, we need to win um, two of these three games, I think, in terms of just holding on to your spot. Um, for at least fourth place, and, and you're, you're looking at a decent spot in the standings with a bye. But we just want to continue to play good basketball. And, and so we've had stretches. Um, the five-game stretch, I thought, was, was a sign of growth in terms of our ability to finish games. Um, and I still feel good about that. We just got to get off to better starts. So this week, I think the biggest thing for us is the first four minutes. Um, win the first four minutes, execute the first four minutes, and, and, and have an understanding of how hard you have to play to start the game. You guys have played well in the second half of conference play. Just how much can these three games maybe kind of still elevate you and catapult you guys? Have you noticed that in the past and uh, at the end of regular seasons? Yeah, momentum. The, the teams that are playing well down the stretch are typically the teams that perform well in the tournament. And um, the years that we've won the conference tournament or at least gotten to the championship game, um, we've, we've finished strong um, in terms of your last four or five games. Um, you won a high percentage of them, and we want to continue to do that. Um, but there's some things that we could do better offensively and defensively in terms of our execution. And so we're going to work on those things this week, and hopefully we show growth in those areas on Thursday. As always, Travis, thanks so much for your time. Grizzmen home on Thursday and Saturday against Portland State and Sacramento State. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Grizzly Insider. Take coverage of the Grizz with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider. The regular season wraps up this weekend in the Big Sky Conference, and for both Grizz programs, it'll be three games in five days to close out the schedule. The Grizz men are at home against Portland State on Thursday and Sac State on Saturday, both with 7 p.m. tip-offs. They'll head to Idaho on Monday to finish their 18-game conference slate. 
The women will be on the road to Portland and Sacramento, followed by their home game against Idaho next Monday, as both teams look to solidify their place in the standings heading into Boise. Thanks so much for joining us for Grizzly Insider, and we'll see you back here again next week. Have a great evening, everyone.